Fauci, you got some splaining to do. All right, have some of y'all heard our fearless leader, Bill Gates, I mean, Dr. Fauci, backed manipulating viruses in a Wuhan lab. Oh, what does this mean? Well, it's something called gains of function research. And today I want to talk a little bit about why that happened and kind of what's going on here. Interesting times. So first, I want to start off talking about how the United States has a biological weapons program. I'm sorry, had. It had one. It doesn't have one anymore. This is according to, to Wikipedia. This was in 1943, World War II time, and it continued into 1969 when it was discontinued. So basically, the biological weapons program was figuring out some of these microbes, these, these infectious diseases, and how do they make them more infectious, basically. Things like anthrax, q fever, botulism, Botox. So... It's just interesting to know that this existed and supposedly it's gone, but we still do have the United States Biological Defense Program is still intact. So why did the U.S. outsource bat virus research into Wuhan? Well, similar to stem cells in the United States, the United, we tried to do our best to ethically look at things. And when we looked at manipulating viruses, there was enough backlash for that the government said, hey, probably not a good idea to be messing with these viruses, specifically trying to weaponize things like MERS and SARS, um, specifically a virus that's very popular right now. So the federal government in 2014 pretty much banned this research. Now, uh, what Fauci did um, at the time, and he's still head of the NIAID, decides, hey, we'll just outsource this into China, which is, again, I don't know how many conflicts of interest in that. It's just like, Hmm. gets me frustrated just kind of thinking about it. So they decide to outsource the research. They continue the research and they're going to do it in China because the United States says, hey, it's not ethical. But one of, but one of our higher up decision-making do, you know, doctors in the United States that says, hey, well, if the United States won't let me do it, I'm going to do it over in China. And so this article, you can't see it from the bottom there, this came out a couple of weeks ago and is reflecting back on all these things out of the Asian Times, which is actually where I first heard about it. And then an article came out in Newsweek. So, but let's talk about back in 2017, this article came out here in Science Magazine, basically talking about this ethical dilemma and how the research was banned in 2014 on what's called gain of function. Okay. Gain of function is when basically when they take a virus and they make it stronger or weaker. That's how we create our uh, immunity shots is by making viruses weaker and we introduce them to the body and then our body can um, form an immune response. So then we're able to attack it if we ever see it again. Now, what was crazy is specifically one of the ethical dilemmas was that with the, the H5N1 bird flu, they were able to make it spread in the air between ferrets. So as you can tell, things are getting pretty things get pretty scary when you start, take, start talking about taking these viruses and manipulating them and making them stronger or weaker, specifically stronger. So here's a paper that just kind of talks about the gains of function research, what it is, what it does, and basically talking about how the NIAID, the NIH, they want to look into SARS, MERS, and another virus that's very popular right now. And then how there was, again, ethical dilemmas and people were arguing about this. So what is gains of function research? We talked about it earlier. It includes the generations of viruses with properties that do not exist in nature, basically meaning they're going to take these viruses and manipulate them in ways that they don't naturally exist. And this out article outlined that we don't have a whole lot of knowledge on some of these viruses that are popular right now. And then here's another paper just talking about the ethical analysis. Uh, I've seen some people in discussions on Facebook, Instagram, and talking about how some certain things can't be man-made. And I'm not sure if they're familiar with CRISPR, but CRISPR is literally the modification of RNA sequencing. And soon they're going to be able to edit genetics, which is actually really crazy. But yes, what they can do with certain viruses is manipulate them and make them more or less virulent. That's basically everything I've just talked about. So this stuff does happen. And here's one last article. This is the one that became really popular on Newsweek, and it basically just says, hey, we gave $7.4 million to this lab in China to do gains of function research. So very interesting times. Uh, I'm not trying to draw any conclusions. I just want to present some information that I found that seems that entangles a little bit. 
So, hey guys, if you think this was good information, go ahead and share this with some of your friends. If you have comments or you've heard some other stuff, please leave that below. I'd love to hear about it. And I want to give mad respect to all those people out there that are backing up free speech. There's been some censorship. Um, I, I personally had a video of mine taken down where I talked about the disinfectant injections, and uh, I'll be talking about that more in some of my next videos. So um, stay safe and healthy, everyone. Much love. God bless.